All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Calabi ball python. The Calabi actually consists of three genes, the pastel, the spider, and the calico. And I have to say, it's probably one of the most visually impressive combinations when it comes to ball pythons. And all three genes have been around for a really long time, so you can actually get into the project without actually breaking the bank. And when you start adding other genes into the Calabi, you can make some really breathtaking combinations. So today I want to jump over to the internet, and I want to show you the amazing potential potential of the Calabi ball python. All right, so I'm going to jump over here at morphmarket.com and I want to show you the three genes that make up the Calabi. And the first one I want to show you is the Calico. This is what one version of the Calico looks like. And at first glance, it looks almost like a normal ball python. But the thing that makes it a Calico is you see that it has little tiny specks of white coming in on the sides of the snake. And sometimes it can have a lot of white where it's almost like a blaze white stripe coming down the side of the snake. And sometimes it almost has just a little bit bit of white right on the belly. Sometimes you can hardly tell that it's actually a calico. And the calico is a dominant mutation. So if you breed it to something else, half the offspring come out as calico. So here is another ingredient in the calabi, and that is the pastel. And if you're used to looking at like hatchling pastels, sometimes they can be really bright yellow. And I wanted to show you this one because this is really kind of what, what your pastel can end up as. As a matter of fact, I have two pastels in my collection that are just straight pastel females and they produce some really bright offspring and they're both really kind of faded out brown like this it's kind of a brownish yellow that a lot of pastels can actually fade into you can actually add certain genes to the pastel to keep their brightness I think probably the best one is desert ghost a pastel desert ghost is really super bright even as an adult and kind of the other thing that's interesting about pastel is it really reduces the pattern I'd say this one is really reduced Sometimes it's almost like, like tiger stripes on the sides of the snake, and sometimes it's hardly reduced at all. That can be pretty variable too. So here is the third ingredient in the Calabi, and that is a spider. And I actually wanted to pull up this adult spider so you can see the spiders pretty much don't change at all as they age and mature. It's a really impressive, just a standalone morph. The spider is also dominant too, so if you breed it to something else, half the offspring come out as spider. And it's kind of interesting a lot of people ask me hey what are the genes in the spider how do I make one and believe it or not it's just one gene but if you actually look at it it almost looks if you look at the side it almost looks like it's calico in the mix and this is just part of the spider gene so it's kind of the complicated part of this project is when you take a calico and you breed it into a spider sometimes you can't tell that the calico is in there sometimes you can actually have a really low white spider and a really low white calico calico at the same time and produce a calabi that is not as high white as, as some of the other ones. It gets a little bit confusing, but let me tell you, if you actually make a calabi that is really super high white, it is really visually stunning and there's no question that you have calico and spider in the mix. And here's what happens if you mix the spider, the calico, and the pastel together all in the same snake. Take a look at this. This is an amazing snake. This is the Calabi. I'd say this is probably probably one of the most amazing examples that I've ever seen of a Calabi. Really super high white. And the white is so blazing white. It is really amazing. And the contrast between the whites and the darks is really amazing. And kind of the interesting thing about a lot of Calabis, especially the high whites, is you have these really super, almost like an inkjet little speckles all through the snake that makes for a really interesting visual appearance. As a matter of fact, I actually brought up a few more examples of the Calabi. Some of them aren't like a blaze white like this one. Take a look at this one. This is actually the same genes, the Calabi, but it's kind of a, a more yellow version of the Calabi. Sometimes they can be pretty yellow, and sometimes they can be almost a xanthic looking. I actually pulled up one more example. Take a look at this one. This is a crazy Calabi. Look at this crazy snake. That is really amazing. As a matter of fact, uh, I was kind of wondering on the prices on some of these, and I, I wouldn't think they're that that expensive. This one is $600, but you know, $600, you got to keep in mind, this is a female that is 1800 grams and ready to breed. And let me tell you, even a ready to breed pastel is, you know, worth some money because, you know, a lot of people are looking at that return on investment, especially in a three gene combo like this pretty amazing snake. 
So take a look at this one. This is actually, uh, it's, it's, it's the same snake, the same jeans, except you have one more copy of the pastel in the mix. So this is the super pastel version of the Calibi, also known as a Killer Bee Calico. And this one, it's kind of interesting. Sometimes when you add two copies of pastel, it almost reduces the amount of yellow and even jumbles up the pattern even more. It really scrambles up the pattern. Sometimes these can almost, almost look like a xanth where you have the recessive azanthic in there. It can almost trick you into believing that this is something that it isn't. Pretty amazing combination. I actually pulled up one more example of this just to kind of show you the variability of the Killer Bee Calico. And take a look at this one. This is really crazy. It's hard to believe some of these snakes have the same exact genes and can look so different. This one, this one, this is kind of like your low white version of the Killer Calibi. Uh, I, I guess the the, the super pastel version of the Calibi, also known as the Killer Bee Calico. And it gets a little bit confusing with the common names. You can actually have the, the Killer Bee is actually the combination of the super pastel and the spider. And this is actually, uh, I don't know if you can actually call it, I guess you would just call it the super, the super pastel version of the Calibi. Makes for a really and visually stunning thing. It's kind of interesting how it really jumbles up the pattern on this one. And you still get all this little freckling all over the snake pretty amazing so here is the yellow belly and when it comes to yellow belly mixing it in with the calabi you can get some really stunning visual results the yellow belly i'd consider kind of a sleeper morph because by itself it almost looks like a normal ball python as a matter of fact most of them i don't know if i could tell the difference in most cases between a yellow belly and a normal it is really subtle and this one usually with uh with the yellow belly there are some markers you can actually pick out a lot of times they have these little flames coming up the sides right between the the, the little alien heads here and if you actually look at the belly sometimes the belly is yellow it doesn't always have a yellow belly and a lot of times on either side of the belly it kind of has like a jumbled up pattern and sometimes you can see a little kind of a clear spot on the head on yellow bellies but sometimes it's not always accurate as far as all these markers some of them can look really normal and kind of the confusing thing about yellow bellies is it's also allelic with gravel and asphalt and spark a lot of those allelic common combinations to make the highways, the freeways, and the pumas. And the problem is, is you can actually produce a snake like this and the gravels and all the other allelic complexes actually look like the yellow belly. So a lot of cases you can't tell the difference between a yellow belly or a gravel, which gets even more <laughs> confusing. Trying to work yellow belly into stuff, you, sometimes you don't know what you have. But here's what happens if you work yellow belly into the calabi. Take a look at this snake. This is really <laughs> amazing. And this in this specific example, I couldn't believe how much yellow actually was brought out of the snake with the addition of yellow belly. And that is really the power of the yellow belly. You can actually add it to a lot of combos. And as a standalone morph, it doesn't really look that impressive. But when you start mixing it with other combinations, especially if you mix it with like Orange Dream or Pastel or Fire, a lot of times you can really make the yellows just really pop. It is really amazing. And this one also has, I just kind of realized this one has Blade in the mix so blade is kind of an interesting gene a lot of people think you know originally i thought the blade was kind of a reduced version of clown but come to find out the blade is actually a separate gene and essentially a lot of people consider the blade another line of enchi so if you actually can compare the blades right next to enchi there's definitely differences in both of them they both really reduce the pattern in the snake but i found that um, generally the blade doesn't really bring out a lot of the oranges that you see in a lot of inches and it really doesn't reduce the pattern in the same way as the inches you get a pattern reduction but it looks a lot of times the blade will look like a different type of pattern reduction and sometimes you can actually pick out the differences between blade and inch kind of a sidetrack note there that was kind of a I actually did a, a video on the inch and I kind of brought that up a long time ago so here is the pinstripe, and if you actually work pinstripe in the Calabi, you get a really interesting effect. The pinstripe is another dominant morph. You breed it with something else, half the offspring come out as pinstripe, and the pinstripe is a bright, really super bright gold snake, really awesome. One of my favorite standalone genes, and I never really appreciated the pinstripe until I actually made some of my own. And let me tell you, you really can't capture like the gold, like the metallic gold color of a pinstripe in a picture. It almost like 
glows in your hand if you actually hold a pinstripe. It's pretty amazing. And here's what happens if you were a pinstripe into the Calibi. Take a look at this. This is a really interesting effect between these. This is actually, it's, you can almost see the pinstripe pattern coming right down the top and then the spider and the calico are really bringing up. It's kind of interesting on this one. You almost can't see the calico in this combination because it's only halfway coming up the side and some of these are kind of difficult unless you actually you know can really pick them up. Sometimes you just have to breed a lot of snakes and you know you know based on what you have because pretty much side by side of you know what you produced and what you didn't produce you know you can actually pick out some of these genes if the genes are in there. Sometimes it takes a really trained eye to pick them out. So here is the lesser ball python. The lesser is actually in the blue-eyed leucistic complex, and it's one of the few genes in the blue-eyed leucistic that if you mix it with anything else in the blue-eyed leucistic, you end up with an all-white snake with blue eyes, which is a really visually stunning snake. And a lot of times, if you in the blue-eyed leucistic complex, if you mix things like if you mix Mojave with Phantom, you get the purple the purple passions, and a lot of times you get kind of a purple-colored snake, and it's kind of the opposite with the lesser. So so if you take a lesser phantom or a lesser mystic or some of those kind of the, you know the kind of the exceptions in the blue eyed leucistic the lesser you always get an all white snake with blue eyes it's a really powerful white snake maker which is pretty cool <laughs> kind of the cool thing about the lessers and here's what happens if you were a lesser into the calibi take a look at this snake this is really amazing i really like what the lesser does it completely transforms it into kind of kind of smooth everything out and kind of blends it all together and you kind of get a lower contrast which makes for a really interesting visual effect and you notice on a lot of these combinations a lot of times it'll have some really interesting patterns on the head and that is usually due to the spider if you mix spider in a lot of combinations you get some really crazy head patterns which is pretty cool so here is the banana ball python and the banana when you mix it in with other combinations usually it's really visually dominant so if you mix it in with a combination you can almost always tell that the banana is in the mix almost completely opposite of the yellow belly sometimes the yellow belly is hard to pick out as you know some of the other genes can be really subtle in some combinations and then in certain combinations they really pop but in the with in the case of the banana in every single combination you can pretty much always see the banana in the the mix and here's what happens if you work the banana in with the calibi take a look at this this is really an amazing combination you can definitely see it kind of smooths out the whole thing with the banana you can kind of see the banana color in there and this one it has a really high white you can definitely see the spider and the calico in the mix makes for a really impressive combination so here is the leopard. The leopard's a really interesting gene. It actually, I, I would kind of consider the leopard like the king of combos as far as a co-dominant mutation where you can actually really explode the patterns. It's really a pattern enhancing gene where a lot of times it'll really jumble up the patterns and sometimes it'll really explode it. And the leopard is kind of on the edge of being a dark morph. You can actually mix it with genes that are dark and really enhance the dark colors. And if you actually mix it with something like a coral or a banana a lot of times it won't darken it at all it'll just jumble up the pattern and here's what happens if you mix leopard in with a calibi take a look at this this is probably one of my favorite combinations working leopard into a combination like this it just really explodes the pattern I was actually kind of surprised how much it really affected the pattern usually the leopard really doesn't you know kind of explode the pattern and I'm thinking it's probably the combination of the leopard and the spider and probably the pastel too kind of jumbling up the pattern and it's kind of interesting on this one because you don't really see the white coming up the sides on the sink it's almost like you have a low white version of the spider and a low white version of the calico coming together to make this really amazing sink as a matter of fact i was wondering how much this snake sold for this one was 500 dollars. not too bad that is pretty amazing 
All right, so this is the last one I want to show you. This is a bamboo. As a matter of fact, this is a picture of Bobby, the snake that I have around my neck at the beginning and the end of the videos. As a matter of fact, if you noticed Bobby this morning, <laughs> the, I actually had him on my, my neck this morning, and he, you can probably see it at the beginning of this video. It's actually, he actually just went through a shed, so he's looking really super good. Uh, my last couple of videos, he was really in deep blue, kind of just faded out, and he went through a shed. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about doing another auction on that shed a lot of people actually did an auction on one of his sheds and someone bought it and then more people are coming back saying hey I didn't win that auction can you do another auction on one of Bobby's sheds and it's almost a complete shed so I thought hey you know I guess I could you know auction off another shed from Bobby it's kind of interesting I'll actually put the link underneath this video and I'll set up another 10-day auction on that it's, it's kind of fun actually bidding on Bobby's sheds and here's what happens if you work bamboo into the calibi take a look at this this is a bamboo bumblebee calico really amazing combination and it's kind of interesting on this one how yellow it is usually the bamboo is really visually dominant and sometimes if you work bamboo in with spider sometimes it reduces the the kind of the pattern of the bamboo and a lot of times if I kind of found this with a lot of my bamboos if I'm breeding a whole bunch of bamboos and I get a whole bunch of hatchlings sometimes some of those hatchlings can be super reduced to where they almost look like they have inchy in them or like a bamboo spider and sometimes I think it would be really hard to actually pick out you know some of those genes like the spider or the inchy when you mix it with bamboo and a lot of times when you work pastel in with bamboo a lot of times you really can't see the influence of the pastel until the bamboo actually ages and matures a little bit as a matter of fact I'm guessing this one since it's so bright yellow it's probably got some age to it yeah this is 360 seven grams and usually when they're first born you almost can't see the pastel in there but then when they start aging they start bringing in some pastel it's pretty amazing combination all right so it is time for the question of the day and new mania asks when you're bringing two snakes together does it matter which genes are in the male versus the female and that is a very good question as a matter of fact i've been asked this question a lot of times so for example if you actually are breeding like a pastel to a pinstripe does it matter if the male or female is one gene or the other and as far as i know it doesn't really matter you can mix any genes in the male or the female so the fact that you could take a male that has like five genes and then breed it to a normal female and you pretty much get the same results is if you're breeding like two or three gene snakes together as long as you have those same genes in the male or female pretty much the odds are the same and the only one that really makes a difference there's two genes which is the coral glow and the banana which a lot of people think it's the same exact gene and that is kind of the whole genetic anomaly of the male makers and the female makers but other than that it doesn't really matter and the coral glows and bananas are kind of interesting if you actually have a female and a, a female banana and it produces a a male banana that male will be a female maker it depends on the gender of the parents that actually make it a female maker or a male maker and it's kind of the opposite way so for example I have um, I actually have some male makers here in my collection so I've actually took a male banana and I bred it to something else and produced a male banana all those males would be male makers and if you actually breed a male maker it produces all male bananas and no females which is really an interesting anomaly but other than those two genes pretty much doesn't matter which genes are in the male versus the female so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video